Joining me now is Ken Stedman. He's a virologist and professor of biology at Portland State University. Ken, thanks so much for your time for TRT World. Now, um, what sort of treatment for the coronavirus is available at this point? That's a really good question, Aviza. And basically, there's very few treatments available for coronavirus. Scientists are working very hard to try and come up with treatments. Mostly what they're trying to do is to use some of the treatments that have previously been used for SARS and for MERS, and in some cases, in fact, Ebola, to try and treat the disease. Best thing to do would be to have a vaccine, but we're not going to have one of those for at least a year. And Ken, why is this taking so long? When can we expect some progress and more information about the virus? More information about the virus is coming very quickly. Um, there are multiple researchers around the world who are trying to find out more about the virus. And this will tell us a lot more about what we can use in terms of treatment, in terms of these potential vaccines. The problem with the vaccine is it takes a very long time to come to development. And most of that is just to prove that a vaccine is safe. If someone is not sick, you don't want to give them something that makes them more sick. And so that kind of testing just takes a very long time. In terms of understanding the virus, we've made huge amounts of progress, but there's still a lot to go. Mm -hmm. And why is it so difficult to contain the outbreak? That's a wonderful question. The answer is we really don't know. But what seems to be happening is you have a lot of spread from person to person with this outbreak. But that being said, if you think about the actual numbers, right now, 99% of the cases of coronavirus have all been in China. And most of those have been in Hubei province. So if you think about the real spread, I'm actually kind of surprised it hasn't spread further and faster than it already has. Mm. And uh, are people overreacting? And is that making things worse? It's really hard to tell whether it's overreaction or not, partly because we know so little about the disease and how little about how it's actually being transferred. The case you just had in Hong Kong about being potentially transferred via the sewer system, that's really pretty new. And most people think about coronaviruses. And it's probably true that transfer is mostly through respiratory symptoms. But if there's some transfer also through sewer systems, then we have to think very carefully and differently about how some of the spread could be taking place. And Ken, uh, just briefly, uh, how should we protect ourselves from the virus in case we are traveling? The best way to protect yourselves is to wash your hands um, with soap, particularly with soap. Soap's actually better than some of the other hand sanitizers, and wash them for a long time. Um, that's the major reason to a way that you can keep yourself from being infected. Masks work reasonably well. Unfortunately for me, with a beard, a mask would basically almost not work at all because it's not going to block that much. Another thing you can do, if possible, is to avoid other people who are clearly sick. Um, that most of the transmissions that we've seen so far have been with people who have been relatively clearly sick and are very close to other people. And that's where there are really some conditions. So if you do happen to be out and about, I would stay away from people, particularly those who are sneezing. Okay, thanks so much for that. Very useful stuff. Ken Stedman, a virologist and professor of bio biology at Portland State University. Thanks so much, Ken, once again.